Hi, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Sean Barton here from Tortoise IT. Uh, just a quick video today, I wanted to show you um, a feature which actually I've had to explain a few times recently, which uh, perhaps isn't as documented as it should be. Uh, it is the ability to filter um, loop archive or CPT injector, taxonomy injector based um, layouts um, by a taxonomy, um, so by a category or a tag. So if you wanted to show, for instance, um, a a, a, a list of uh, blog posts from a specific category on a page, any page at all, um, in any format, shape, style, whatever, you can do that. Now I won't go into how the loop archive module works because actually I've, I've shown that previously in another video. Um, this is just to show exactly what needs to go in these two rather kind of uh, ambiguous fields that I've added uh, at the bottom there. Um, so firstly, I'll just show you what the data setup is. Um, I'm looking here uh, at the um, uh, the project post type, which comes with uh, Divi already. Uh, I've just added some really basic example content. Some have got images, they've all got content uh, and uh, titles. Now I've created uh, three categories here. So we've got category one, two, and three. And I've liberally sprinkled the uh, the categories around the uh, different pieces of content. Just for example purposes, really. So you can see we've got three, six in category one, three in category two, and two in category three. <clears throat> and my example page is just going to be a very, very basic sort of column-based uh, page, uh, just to give you an example of where you can kind of dump this. So bear in mind these are projects, which is a custom post type. If you don't know what they, they are, uh, see one of my other videos, Google it, or just ask me. Um, but for all intents and purposes, these could be blog posts, they could be anything else that you've added. They could be WooCommerce products, anything at all. Um, now, the plugin I'm going to use here is the uh, CPT injector plugin, the custom post type injector. Um, but um, really, the same module and the same functionality exists within the taxonomy layout injector plugin and the search injector plugin, I believe, as well. Um, but the main one you're probably going to use it with will be CPT injector or taxonomy injector. Now, um, so there's there's the data. Um, first thing we need to know is what post type we're looking at. Now we can tell that by clicking into the edit page, which is what we're on now, the list page, looking in our URL, and you should be able to see rather clearly post type equals project. All lowercase, no spaces, no punctuation, nothing else. So we're going to keep that in mind, project. We then need to know what we call the taxonomy name. Taxonomy is a category, a tag, or anything else you're going to add. You can add custom ones. Again, won't go into how to do that, but for now, um, we're just going to add our categories. Now, it's not just category, um, because we're in projects. In fact, if we click into categories here, we'll see I've got three of them. And again, once again, in the URL, taxonomy equals project underscore category. All lowercase, no punctuation, everything else. Um, now, again, we need to remember that. Now, if we're going to um, display a specific term, what we call a taxonomy term, which is just a, a, a page, a, a taxonomy archive page, so a page or a, a list of category one items, so we call that a term. <clears throat> now, the thing that we need to find out for that is what we call the slug, which is here, rather helpfully uh, sort of displayed for us. So we've got uh, our uh, category hyphen one, all lowercase, uh, no spaces or anything else as ever, category 2, category 3, yours will be anything you like, uh, as you'd imagine, yours might be, you know, news, case studies, uh, that sort of thing, testimonials, and it will show you the slug there, so you need the post type name, which is here, project, the taxonomy name, project category, and a slug. So we're going to create our page, which for me actually just took me a couple of minutes, um, I've just set this up here, just a standard WordPress page, um, I've called it CPT limit by taxonomy example rather cryptically um, and I've already pre-configured the, um, the layouts um, for the loop archive module, the, the other layout that we use. So really that, that all it is is a single column with a title um, and content with a read more tag. So this is all kind of built into to the builder anyway. Um, these three columns indicate the three categories because uh, I've got three separate modules, each one limited by a specific um, project category. So you'll notice that category one, for instance, I've actually called them all category one, category that should be category three. Category three uh, has got, uh, I think, two. Here you go, category three has two terms in it, and uh, two uh, items in that term, sorry. And there you should be able to see now two items only. Uh, category two has got three only, you're seeing one, two, three and no 
next page uh, tag. Uh, no, I've limited these to show three. Obviously, this one here, this has six, um, and that that is automatically. Oh, there you go. That's going. That's uh, automatically showing you uh, the older entries button. You can install the WP Page Navi plugin for free. Um, which will actually automatically convert this to page numbers. I, I use it all the time. Um, I would add pagination to these plugins, but but frankly, activating another free plugin, um, there's not a great deal of points to be honest. May do it in the future, but bear that in mind. Older entries, newer entries turns into page numbers with WP Page Navi. That's across all my plugins, the Woo Injector especially. Uh, so you'll see there's three there. If I pressed older entries, you'd see three more, and you would see newer entries instead. Um, now let's go and have a look at the uh, the modules, the page builder layout for this page here. Okay, so we've got a, a single row where I've just dumped in a title here, CPT taxonomy, just just for the sake of having a, a, a title bar. I've set the background to purple, and this is just a normal WordPress page uh, with three columns, and I've just added the same module three times, CPT loop archive. Now, obviously, if you were using the taxonomy injector plugin, that would be ET tax loop archive or whatever I've called it. I can forget now, um, but they all have the same options. Uh, now, just clicking into the first one here. The options again I won't really go into, but um, uh, we've just added a title to the top, category one, um, just again for the sake of the example. I've chosen a loop layout, which is just if my single column layout, and I've told it I want it a list, because I'm only putting it in one column, so it will show one above the other. Um, and I'm going to show pagination. Yes, that's the older entries, newer entry, and then custom query. Because we're adding this to a WordPress page, um, custom query will be yes, because that page has no query, has no... Um, <laughs> Oh, I've just made some money, lovely. Uh, has no uh, data um, on it. So for example, we're just a page. There's no um, archive list of posts, pages, or anything else. Um, so we need to tell it we want a custom query to show a different subset of data. So we say yes to this, and that then shows you all these different fields here. And remember the things that we uh, we checked earlier, our post type, well, that's projects. That's helpfully in a drop-down menu here for us. So we're going to choose projects. I show, I'm showing three in my example, but you could just as easily show the latest one by showing one or six or ten or a hundred or anything you wanted to, and that will just keep on going. Um, but three is a sensible number for this. Offset number is just, you know, if you don't want to show the first one, show offset one. Don't want to show the first two, offset two. And then the two fields, which I really need to explain here for this, this uh, short video, uh, we've got uh, include taxonomy only and include taxonomy terms. Note we've also got filter on meta key and meta key terms work in exactly the same way but for the sake of this video let's just go with our taxonomy terms now I've already filled it in so hopefully you get the idea um, include taxonomy only is which taxonomy is going are you going to be filtering this data by it says here this will filter the query by this taxonomy slug so that is the what we call the slug of the taxonomy project underscore category as seen um, at the top of this page here taxonomy equals project underscore category and then the second box would be the um, the term or terms that we want to filter this uh, by so these these uh, fields here work in tandem so you firstly have to tell it which taxonomy that you want to filter by and then you have to tell it which terms from within that taxonomy do you want to to filter by one or the other won't work if you put the wrong thing in you'll get unexpected results either it will ignore it um, or it will show you um, cannot find these results. So it's not ideal, really, actually, I have to say. Um, so you have to get these right, which is why I've put advanced users only here. Um, so project category, and then the slug of the taxonomy you want to show. Now, of course, you could just put comma, category, hyphen, two, no spaces, um, and that would show both of them, or comma, category, three, and so on and so on. Um, that's it's quite flexible here and what you can do with it. You can actually add a pipe symbol here, project category, you know, pipe category, and then pipe here, and then so it would actually do, uh, do a, a taxonomy query across two taxonomies and two sets of terms to sort of, uh, to go even further with the filtering. But for now, for the sake of the video, I'll keep it simple. Um, so project category, category one. And all I did was to make these other two was to duplicate the module and to change the slug option at the bottom here. So this is all the same and uh, I've got here taxonomy terms uh, hyphen two. Now interesting uh, setting I've added here in the most recent version uh, hide of no results. So if you wanted to show your most recent um, case studies or news feeds or something else 
or anything in a specific category if you check the box to say hide if no results it simply will not show the module if there's no results sounds quite simple but actually it's quite handy because if you think about it if you're having a, a big home page that's going to have loads of data on there and you're flicking around with taxonomies and tags all the time um, you're going to see sorry no results quite frequently uh, especially on the, uh, the sort of the final pages and if you're clicking next page previous page etc so hide if no results set to yes gets away get, sort of gets rid of that issue by simply not showing the module um, if no data is returned on this query. But for testing purposes, leave that off so that you can see sorry no results if um, if nothing is returned. So there we have it. Uh, in terms of the styling of this page, um, I'm a designer, uh, and so as you can tell, um, <coughs> I've simply set the background colors of these columns uh, to, they're all 50% transparent and they're just the standard colors. That's a black, that's an orange, and that's a purple, obviously. Um, with the um, uh, the sub layout um, background color text colors rather set to um, white, just so that it actually shows. It's quite a nice effect actually. Be nice to show without titles and to show just one perhaps on the top of a page somewhere. Um, but it's, it's quite a pleasing um, effect. So anyway, hopefully that explains and shows you how to use uh, that particular feature from within the uh, CPT Loop Archive module within Taxonomy Layout Injector and CPT Injector. Uh, I'll keep making these short videos and uh, hopefully it helps a few of you out. Righto, thanks very much.